In this video, we're going to look at levels of organization from cells to organ systems. So, in terms of level organization, let's start with very, very basic. The most basic level is the cell, and let's draw ourselves a simple animal cell. Here's an animal cell, you're probably familiar with this. Let's look at all the different organelles. On the outside, we've got a cell membrane. Now, the cell membrane controls the passage of substances into and out of the cell. Inside this, you've got the cytoplasm and it's a jelly-like substance and it's here where most chemical reactions take place and in the middle you've got the nucleus now nucleus controls the activities of the cell let's compare that with a plant cell here's a plant cell now some of the things are in common with the animal cell but some are quite different first of all these are things that they've got in common a cell membrane a cytoplasm and a nucleus so let's have a quick quick look now at what's different. First of all, around the outside of the plant cell, you've got a cellulose cell wall. Now this is fully permeable. What it does is strengthens the cell. It's made of cellulose, a very strong substance that strengthens the cell. Inside the middle of the plant cell, you've got a permanent vacuole. Now the permanent vacuole contains cell sap and this tends to give strength and rigidity to the cell. The more sap there is in there, the more rigid the cell, the more supported it is. And lastly, you've got these green structures here called chloroplasts. Now, chloroplasts absorb light energy to make food through photosynthesis. They've got a special green pigment called chlorophyll, and chlorophyll has the ability to absorb light energy. Right, now a really popular exam question is compare the two types of cell, plant and animal cells. What do we find, first of all, in plant animal cells. We find a nucleus, cytoplasm and cell membrane. These are all common to plant animal cells. What about the things only found in plant cells? Well we've got the chloroplasts, the cell wall and the permanent vacuole. You need to learn this because this often comes up in exam questions. Now we looked at a very simple animal and plant cell. Let's look now at more specialized cells. This here is an egg cell or an ovum. You can see here it's surrounded by lots of sperm. Now it's much larger than other cells because it carries food reserves and here you'll find a developing embryo if one of these sperm gets through and fertilization takes place. Sperm themselves have got these elongated tails and this helps them to swim. They can swim to the egg following ejaculation into the vagina. These are red blood cells. Now red blood cells are unique in the body and they do not have a nucleus. Okay, note this biconcave shape, very, very characteristic. They don't have a nucleus, they can be able to pack in more hemoglobin molecules that give it the red colour, and so they can therefore carry even more oxygen. And here we've got nerve cells. Now, nerve cells again are very specialised cells, they're very elongated, some may be over a metre in length, perhaps in your big toe to your um, spinal cord. They carry electrical signals all around the body. Now, the next step up in terms of organization from the cell is the tissues. Now, tissues, as it says here, are groups of similar cells able to work together to carry out a specific function. Let's look at an example. Here is muscle tissue. Now, muscle tissue consists of muscle cells, very specialized, and these cells have the ability to contract and also conduct electrical impulses. There are three types of muscle, smooth, skeletal, and cardiac around the heart. The next step up from the tissue is the organ. So organs consist of groups of tissues working together to perform specific functions. An example of an organ would be the heart. Now the heart, here it is here in all its glory, is a muscular organ found in all animals with a circulatory system. Now it's composed mostly of an amazing substance called cardiac muscle and also connective tissue, but it has in it lots of nervous tissue and also obviously blood. Now, the top level of organization we're interested in is the organ system. Now an organ system is a group of organs that work together to perform a certain task. So here we've got the digestive system. There's lots of organs here. So the digestive system consists of numerous organs including the stomach and the liver. Here's the stomach, here's the liver. It digests food, enables it to be absorbed into the bloodstream in the small intestine down here. Finally, it goes out via this long intestine here and undigested food leaves via the anus. So, to summarize, level or levels of organization. We start with the cells. Cells are organized into tissues. Tissues are organized into organs. 
and organs are organized into organ systems.